All right. Welcome back to another edition of As the Journey Turns, brought to you by me, Dave, the real music observer, observing real journey drama and doing it in real time for a few real people out there just like you and just like me. All right. What would Steve Perry do? <laughs> that is this edition. Um, how do you think Steve Perry is looking at all this? Do you think he's actually looking at it? Does he care? about what's happening, I bet you he cares a lot. This is Steve Perry's brand. It still is. Whether these guys like it or not, Journey and Steve Perry, Steve Perry and Journey, okay? People don't go, Steve Perry is not that important anymore. What they say is, yeah, he's not in the band. I wish he was in the band. That's what they say. It's too bad even today, and we know that Steve wouldn't be able to bring it vocally in the way he used to just not possible um but you know what do you do with steve perry you accommodate hey steve whatever you want you want to sing this in a key that's like two steps lower go go for it go for it we'll tune everything down we'll bring in some acoustic guitars we'll bring in a mandolin right and you could sing whatever you want to sing and people want to see you that's the truth of it all. Now, is Steve going to do this? Of course not. But what does Steve think of this feud? We know that Steve Perry gets a cut of everything when it comes to the albums, which, of course, are meaningless now. But the concerts and the merchandise, yeah, Steve Perry uh, does get some money from that, and that amount has gone down. But I think it stops like at 12.5% something like that might be half of 12, but say, you know, on a big tour, they make $120 million. And let's just say that Steve Perry gets 10% of that. That's nuts, right? Steve Perry just made $12 million from the comfort of his recording studio in Hanford, California, or wherever he's living right now. I don't think it's Hanford, but, um, the truth, I, the journey junkies will say, I know where he lives. It's such and such street over here. Here's a picture of his house. Here's his dog. You know, I'll, I'll get, don't worry. I'll get the comments will, will hit me later. Um, and that's on Patreon, by the way. You want to join Patreon? It's a dollar a month, $2 a month. If you're a journey junkie, you like journey, there are other people over there who are just super duper experts when it comes to journey and Steve Perry. But does Perry care? about the feuding between uh, Jonathan Kane and Neil Sean? Yes, here's why. Because these guys are trashing the brand. Kane has accused Neil Sean of trashing the brand by doing what he's doing. And yesterday, Neil Sean fired back, or the day before, I can't keep track of days, but Neil Sean fired back and said, yes, you shouldn't be doing this in the middle of the tour. You should not be accusing me of maxing out the credit card during the tour. You're ruining it. You're trashing the brand. So Perry, who's like, here's here's the hierarchy here. Here's here are the guys in Journey, the current guys, and then you got the underlings, you know, people who are grunts in the band, you know, Todd Jensen and Jason and all these these people. Dean, they work for Kane and Sean, but in between Kane and Sean is Steve Perry, and then above Steve Perry is God, right? So as you get closer to God, Steve Perry is like your go between. And what I mean by that is people love Steve Perry more than anyone in this band currently. They do. I mean, uh, Arnell has been a trooper. He's been a good guy. He does what everyone says he should do. But people still have this fondness for Steve Perry. Think of it this way, right? So we're in the political season and people talk about approval ratings, right? Like certain politicians have approval ratings, not like how many votes they're going to get. But how do you feel about Donald Trump? How do you feel about whatever presidential candidate? And so they rank these people. You know, they say that Donald Trump has a 42 percent approval rating. Kamala Harris has a 38 percent. And I'm just making numbers up. Um, I think RFK had a really high favorability. Right. It was something like. 70% of people liked RFK. So I'm talking more of likability. Um, and that's a big thing. So when people look at Journey these days, like 
Steve Perry's favorability rating is something like 95%. Whereas when you say Jonathan Kane or Neil Sean, it's probably in the 20s or 30s. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I like those guys, but, uh, you know, John is good. You know, he plays keyboards. He's really good. Neil, Neil's a great guitarist. Uh, but do I like them as people? I don't know. Some people might not like Steve Perry either. But I think overall, when you look at the situation, Steve Perry, because he stopped when he did, he froze himself in a time period. So people look back nostalgically. And they say, oh, remember the days with Steve Perry and Journey? Those were way better days. And they were. They were better for the country. They were better for music. So Steve Perry is in a place now where he can look at these guys and just say, hey, kids, knock it off. Or I'll call Lee Phillips. And uh, he'll get in. He'll somehow grant me standing here, even though I don't think Steve Perry would have standing in any of this. But if you have a good attorney, they might go in there and say, hey, my client negotiated a settlement and an agreement which goes on in perpetuity. And what these guys are doing, based on their behavior, and you could blame Neil Sean more so if Neil, if it's proven that he's the one that spent all this money and it's in black and white, and they get the, uh, the mediator in there to tell the truth about everything and just say... You know, um, we're not making these numbers up. They're right here. Um, but Lee Phillips could go in there and say, uh, I don't know if Lee Phillips is still around, but I'm just using his name because uh, remember Steve Perry, I think he thanked Lee Phillips or his attorneys at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because he's making $12 million staying home. I mean, that sounds like a good gig. I wish, look, Steve, buddy, residual income over here, right? I'm just Jones in for patrons and stuff. You could, you could just, this could be me talking about whatever I want to talk about every day. I could just go full politics or I don't know, try to juggle. I can juggle a little bit. I could try that and see if people watch. I know someone's going to say, can you juggle in the next video? I'm going to be like, nope. So uh, there, there is this possibility behind the scenes that Steve Perry is very unhappy with, with what's going on. Because again, this is why he said, don't break the stone. The guys broke the stone. Some people say, what does that even mean? Well, the stone was essentially that lineup that they all had. Now, we don't know if that lineup includes Steve's favorite rhythm section or the escape lineup. We don't know, but I'm assuming... Let's just go with Escape and Frontier's journey, right? Just for sake of argument. So don't break the stone. And if we're talking those three guys, it's Neil, John, and Steve. So they decided to go on without Steve. Steve probably thought, hey, we're never going to do anything better than we've done. I fulfilled my contracts with the record label. I came out of hiding. I did the album. And then we put out a cheesy live album. And we were done. You guys put out Arrival, and then they canceled the contract after that. There's no market. And so Steve probably thought, hey, we're getting out while the getting out is good. And you guys, we could have just all shared in this wealth, and we could have managed the um, franchise. Because, again, who's to say with more of a focus on the catalog and just the branding of all the old material that this didn't blow up even bigger than it did. Now, you know, Neil Sean makes the argument, hey, we're still out here doing the work. We're going to stadiums. We're keeping the music alive. Yes, that is definitely helpful. But I'm going to say this, in my humble opinion, doesn't compare to what the band accomplished up until 1996. Doesn't compare. Uh, they have not topped that. Revelation was a pretty decent album, uh, but it's a blip. It's a small blip on the radar screen with no staying power. Whereas all that old music has staying power. It's in rotation all over the world. And Steve Perry's voice is on all of those records. So when people hear Journey on the radio, what are they thinking right now? 
They're not reminiscing about Steve Perry. They're not reminiscing about the golden era of Journey. They're thinking about, man, these guys are fighting. It's crazy. I saw this on the local news. They don't have enough money. They're, they're spending like a million dollars on a credit card. Just that those facts and details have gone out. I mean, and Steve Perry, again, seems like a very frugal, uh, practical man. I'm not saying he doesn't live very high off the hog, so to speak, uh, but he's earned it. But I'm sure he's not blowing, you know, a million dollars on an American Express card. He's He's got no need to do that. Um, he isn't married, right? And I and I say that because in, in this situation, it looks as though the marriages were not a good idea. They just weren't a good idea for Neil and John and um, might be more so for one person in this situation than the other. But it certainly has made matters uh, more complicated uh, to see that wives are involved in all of this. No, should just be the band. That should be it. And, you know, Steve Perry uh, made a great deal, and he's probably uh, not liking the fact that these guys are hurting his long-term investments. That's what he's probably looking at. Will this continue on bigger and and better than it was? Maybe, but if these guys do enough damage to the brand, people are going to think, ah, journey. All they did was fight. They're just such a, you know, they they were ungrateful and and they blew all their money and they didn't have any chemistry at the end and nobody can compare to Steve Perry. And again, I'm just saying that no offense to Arnell or Steve Ajeri or Jeff Scott Soto or um, Robert Fleischman or Greg Raleigh. <laughs> Did I go through all of them? I don't know. Um, the point is that uh, Journey is always going to be remembered as Steve Perry's baby, right? And for many of us, uh, you can't get any better than that. That's why people say to me, hey, have you seen Journey on the latest tour? Uh, no, but I saw him a couple of years ago. And I saw him a couple of years before that. And, um, you know, I saw them in 1981 at the Cape Cod Coliseum with Steve Perry. And nothing will come close to that concert. And I'm sorry, I know people like to make new memories and it's going to be great. But sometimes it, it just can't be topped. And that's my whole point about all of this. You cannot top the Steve Perry era of Journey. You can't do it. Um, you can pretend that it's almost as good and that the band is better than ever and they're hitting on all cylinders. No, no, you're not going to hit on more cylinders than the Escape lineup did in 1981 and 1982. And even a little bit before that, I think from the Captured era on right through the Frontiers era. So in there is the super sweet spot. You can even go back a little further when Greg is in the band and, and that mixture between... Greg and Steve is just amazing. They should have done more of those co-lead vocal things, duets or whatever you'd like to call them. Um, but man, people eat that stuff up. The classic Journey fans, um, that was something special. And Perry is a representation of all that was good in those days. And today, it's like not as good. The band isn't as good. Um, they do a good job presenting the material, but, you know, I've got friends in different Journey tribute bands. I've got Resurrection. Um, obviously, we've got Hugo and Voyage. They're fantastic. My old buddies in Northeast Ohio uh, who do a great job still, I guess. I haven't heard them lately, but I assume with uh, Jason Kelty as their singer, they're still doing great stuff. I haven't talked about them in a while, but, um, you know, all of these Journey tribute bands all over the place, and they don't charge a lot of money. And yeah, you don't see your heroes, and you don't see those super amazing guitar solos that Neil Sean does, but a lot of fans, they just want to hear the music. I know it's, I know it's sad. People are losing their attention span when it comes to guitar solos, and the newer fans the newer casual fans just want to hear the, the songs the way they hear them on the radio and who represents that 
it's 100% Steve Perry. So Steve Perry, my guess, is really concerned about what is happening to his brand because he's still part of this legacy. In fact, when they remaster the old material, who's in there helping out? It's Steve Perry doing all of that work. So my humble opinion here is that I'm sure Steve is watching all this and he's probably not happy. Now, will he issue a statement? It would be epic if Steve Perry jumped into this because you know, you've got this battle between Kane and Sean. Perry comes in again, Perry's between Kane and Sean and God, right? He's in, he's somewhere in between and he's going to, he's going to show up and he's going to say, you know what guys, like the father telling the kids, Hey, knock it off, cut it out. You know, uh, we had something great. You guys are destroying it. Stop destroying it. And however that goes, like whatever you have to do to stop the destruction, please stop it now before the fans remember this band as some kind of a hybrid cover band uh, with one original member and they're fighting constantly. And it, it's just become amateur hour. The, the level of class has dropped and, you know, stop trying to pull the band in your direction. Like one individual saying the band is like this and another guy saying, no, the band is more like this kind of a band. No. In the old days, nobody thought that way. It was, you know, the, Five Musketeers. They were out there um, putting out some great music and there was energy and excitement and chemistry and it was off the hook. Today, you know, you're lucky if it's basically on the hook. You know, it's just if you show up, you're you're rooting for these guys. Hey, don't screw this up. I paid two hundred dollars. Don't mess this up. And so Steve Perry is wondering and waiting like he always does. And maybe he doesn't care. <laughs> imagine if somebody was able to interview Steve Perry and say, Hey, do you care about all this infighting? And Perry said, no, I've got a good life. That would be just as Steve Perry as anything else. Yeah, I'm fine. You know, I made $12 million last year. I might only make 10 million this year because these guys are screwing things up, but you know, I've invested well and I think I've got a good rest of my life to have. So Anyway, folks, just some thoughts on the Steve Perry angle in this exciting edition of As the Journey Turns, brought to you by Nabisco and uh, yours truly. Actually, no, Nabisco is not doing anything, uh, but I just gave them a plug. So if you like Cheez-Its, go, go grab some Cheez-Its. Um, I will ask, ask, though, if you can subscribe to the channel, um, hit the bell for notifications on new videos. Also, Patreon. Uh, I've been very stagnant on all of the uh, helping platforms. And quite honestly, it's like, you know, riding around with an elephant on your back. So if you can help the channel out, uh, I had a couple of big donors out there. I'm down to kind of one big donor now. The other one, I think um, they may have left, which I understand because inflation is ridiculous. Um but Patreon, YouTube memberships, and buy me a coffee. You know, if you like this video, you can send me a message through buy me a coffee. Buy me a coffee and say, hey, I love that Steve Perry video. Steve Perry is the best. And you know what? It just makes sense that Steve Perry, we can all remember him fondly. He's trapped in the time warp. He's still awesome because, you know, you don't associate him with what's happening right now. So that's it.